On the tabletop of Warhammer 40,000, Space Marine Terminators are the elite of the elite, teleporting into the heart of the battle wearing tons of advanced ceramite and plasteel. But when the project began to create this tactical dreadnought armor, it had a very different goal. And it was really the failure of that experience, a quick change of use, and the needs of an ever-advancing crusade that led to the Terminator squads of Warhammer 40k. In Warhammer 40k, Terminator armor is the most advanced personal form of armor available to the warriors of the Imperium, a hugely powerful construction made of layered ceramite and able to shrug off wounds from some of the heaviest of weapons. It's been at the pinnacle of Imperial technology for 10,000 years. Its most common users, veteran space marines of the Adeptus Astartes, are deployed as line breakers and elite strike teams, armed with short-ranged weaponry and teleporting into battle directly where they're needed, or being deployed into the most hazardous of environments to clear out enemy forces. But it's a technology that's so advanced that, by the 41st millennium, the secrets of its construction have been all but lost. In many chapters, Terminator armor is considered an ancient relic, carefully shepherded and entrusted to only the most senior and experienced warriors. But it was never designed for this. In fact, when it was developed in the early days of the Imperium, it was intended as a total replacement for power armor, for all those suits worn by the early Legiones Astartes. Terminator armor is, in essence, a suit of power armor, much like the power armor worn by Space Marines, the Sisters of Battle, and the Adeptus Custodes throughout Imperial history. In fact, powered armor, of some form or another, had already been used for millennia before the rise of the Imperium, originally developed from the sort of sealed void suits or mining suits used by colonists as humanity first spread out into the galaxy, and power armor of some form was still present during the Age of Strife, when the old human empires crumbled and the various pockets of humanity were isolated from one another for 5,000 years. When the Emperor rose on Earth towards the end of the Age of Strife, many of those existing technologies were gathered and refined into the first Astartes powered armor marks, used by the 20 Space Marine Legions as they prosecuted their Great Crusade. But pretty soon into the Crusade, with the Legions deployed in the void and against the most dangerous of Xenos enemies, it became apparent that there was a need for something even more durable. Something heavier than the current marks of power armor, but not so resource intensive and taxing to use as the next step up that existed, the dreadnought suits that required permanent installation of the wearer. This new project, the intent to create a tactical dreadnought armor, was eagerly taken up by forge worlds across the growing Imperium, many of whom have been in receipt of newly recovered technologies discovered as the lost strands of humanity were brought back into compliance. To fulfill this brief, numerous prototype patterns of tactical dreadnought armor were created during the early years of the Great Crusade. Many of these varied considerably in their outward design, but they were all adapted from the same core technologies, often designs for exo-armored work rigs used by various colonists to perform maintenance in utterly lethal environments, the reactor core of an engine, or in areas with crushing gravity. These suits were generally heavily armoured and shielded against radiation with colossal loading capacities. Built around an adamantium exoskeleton covered with ceramite and plasteel plating, the suits were powered by upgraded versions of the fibre bundles found in regular power armour, linked into the wearer's nervous system so as to mimic their movements and allow a pretty wide range of motion despite the suit's crushing weight. With a far greater loading capacity, these new patterns of Terminator armor included upgraded augures and scanning systems, portable shield generators, the ability to carry heavier forms of weaponry, and a more compact and powerful power supply, all of which turned the Astartes inside into a walking tank. But in field tests, there were still some issues. 
Despite the increased performance of the fiber bundles, these suits were still slower and more ponderous than lighter marks of power armor, which led to its wearers being outmaneuvered on the battlefield. Plus, the sheer quantity of raw materials and demands on manpower made the production of the armor really labor intensive. This might have led to the end of the experiment, considered a failure given it was meant to be a replacement to regular power armor suits, but many legions had already found ample use for it elsewhere. It proved perfect for tunnel fighting or boarding actions where cover was at a minimum and its huge level of frontal protection was useful for forcing an assault down embattled spaceship corridors. In this, it largely replaced the older breacher squads that had been equipped with boarding shields for similar missions. Plus, its energy shields and greater level of environmental protection led to it being considered much more suitable for teleportation, which then also got around the issue of maneuverability as legions started to equip the armor with teleport homers and deploy heavily armored shock troops directly into the heart of enemy formations. This realization revolutionized the way that the legions fought naval wars. Once their fleet had stripped an enemy vessel of its shielding, squads of elite terminators could be teleported onto the bridge or engine decks, crippling the the target ship in minutes. Horus Lupercal was a particular supporter of the Tactical Dreadnought Armor Project, and his Lunar Wolves deployed Terminator companies at the head of many a spear tip strike. With the use case shifted slightly, Terminator armor came into general use across the Crusade in the form of the first officially sanctioned pattern, the Cataphracti suit. Cataphracti armor was one of the more ponderous and heavily protected of the prototype armor variants, made distinctive by its huge slab-like pauldrons that housed additional shield generators and its loose terruges to protect vulnerable joints. New weapon systems were added over time. Some of them, in the case of the Combi Bolter and Reaper Autocannon, were just a doubling up of existing weapon systems to take advantage of the armor's massive loading capabilities. Others, like the Heavy Flamer and later Cyclone Missile Launcher, were designed for its role in close teleport assault, or to take advantage of the armor's properties as a stable firing platform. With cosmetic variants, the cataphracti suits became common across the legions, often fielded by elite bodyguard units. But as the crusade pushed on, a more ancient technology was rediscovered. The design of imperial power armor advanced, and terminator armor advanced alongside it. Developed during the middle of the Crusade, Mark IV Maximus armor was intended as a major update to the armor of the legions, incorporating newly discovered sensor technologies and advanced materials that made the armor and its power source less bulky without decreasing protection. And alongside it, a new form of Terminator armor came into existence that used many of the same systems. Tartaros pattern Terminator armor took advantage of more sophisticated fiber bundles and motor control systems to improve speed and maneuverability without any loss of structural protection. Though the shield generators were slightly downsized compared to the previous cataphracti armor. Many of its systems were shared either with Mark IV Maximus armor in the case of the helmet or with the advanced Contemptor Dreadnought suits. The Tartaros pattern was rolled out in the latter years of the Great Crusade, with some legions largely replacing their stocks of cataphracti with the new pattern and others using both in different tactical situations. Both of these armors would be in common use by the time the Horus Heresy swept across the galaxy, but the long years of civil war that followed led to the creation and adoption of other designs. The Horus Heresy burned through recruits and war material, and supply of armor became a major concern on both sides, which led to stockpiles of older armor marks being brought back into service, and to a number of stopgap designs, including the pattern of Terminator armor that would become known as Indomitus armor. The Indomitus pattern had existed well before the Heresy, being developed at the same time as many of the other marks, but its performance was never as impressive as either Cataphracti or Tartarus armor, so it was never a particular particularly common pre-heresy pattern. Some legions took advantage of its relative adaptability to build unique variants, like the Gorgon armor used by the Iron Hands, which used photon flare generators in place of conventional energy shields, but was also so radioactive that only the most cyber-augmented of the legion's warriors could safely use it. But generally, Indomitus was a late and barely used variant, neither as heavily armored as Cataphracti, nor as maneuverable as Tartaros. All that was to change in the the heresy. Indomitus armor was, for a tactical dreadnought system, 
relatively easy to maintain and repair, and use cheaper and more easily sourced materials, such as the Mantilla pattern respirator it shared with Mark V power armor, another stopgap design of the Horus Heresy. As the war rolled on, legions started to build and deploy Indomitus armor en masse, often reserving the more valuable marks for their veteran companies and deploying Indomitus clad units directly to the front lines to soak up incoming fire. The Ultramarines in particular made heavy use of Indomitus armor to replace their losses at Kalth, which in the wake of the Heresy, and the dominance of the colossal Ultramarines Legion and their successors in the aftermath paved the way for Indomitus becoming the most commonly used form of Terminator armor in the 10,000 years since then. Of course, numerous other variants have existed over the years. Saturnine armor was an early development, functionally identical to Indomitus and Tartaros patterns, and other records list an Arconac pattern that still exists in the 41st millennium, though there's no visual confirmation on what either of those look like. And Vulcan, the Primarch of the Salamander, was known to have developed an even more heavily armoured variant early in the Great Crusade. Prototypes of this were in limited use just before the betrayal at Istvan that signalled the beginning of the heresy. In the 41st millennium, Aegis pattern Terminator armour is a heavily modified version of Indomitus armour used by the Terminators of the Grey Knights, inlaid with hexagramic wards and seals to better protect the wearer from the powers of the warp. And while they're the most common, the Space Marines are not the only Imperial forces to make use of Terminator-style armour. The Custodes have been using it since its inception in the Great Crusade. Aquilon pattern armour was a development of the Cataphracti pattern retool for the Custodes, a colossal construction boasting a larger power source and superior motor bundles that allowed it to move as swiftly as regular Custodes armour, and of course with an Auramite outer layer. These suits were used by the Theranatoi cast, equipped with ancient Terran weaponry like Lastrum storm bolters and Infernus firepikes. This was later developed into the Alarus Terminator armour used by the Adeptus Custodes in the 41st millennium, a lighter form of Terminator armour that's still one of the most effective combat armours in the Imperium. Custom suits of Terminator armour have even been crafted for notable Inquisitors over the years, particularly for the Ordo Malleus, where the extra protection comes in handy when facing off against demons from the warp. But despite the multitude of marks and patterns dotted around the galaxy of the 41st millennium, Terminator armour is still incredibly rare. For the most part, its use is confined to the first company of a Space Marine chapter, and though relic suits are still sometimes seen, it's likely that each veteran of the chapter enters battle wearing a suit of Indomitus armour that is thousands of years old, repaired and replaced bit by bit over the years, new suits combined from the wreckage of those destroyed in battle, every part salvaged if at all it can be. On the right shoulders of these suits sits the Crux Terminatus, a symbol of loyalty to the Emperor said to contain a shard of his own armour taken after his fateful battle with Horus, which doesn't exactly make it less difficult to replicate. Construction of new suits of armour is a very rare enterprise. Many chapters are only able to field a few dozen suits, the rest destroyed over the ten millennia since the heresy, or of course, lost to traitor legions. The Terminator armour used by the Chaos Space Marines is no less rare, though the traitor legions seem to have made off with more of their older marks intact. While the majority of Chaos Terminators seen wear ornately decorated suits of Indomitus plate, Death Shroud Terminators of the Death Guard still use ancient corrupted suits of Cataphracti armour, while the elite Scarab Occult of the Thousand Suns go to war in stylized Tartaros armour. Terminator squads in the universe of Warhammer 40k are an ever-dwindling necessity. They're now central to the way the Astartes make war, nigh indestructible walking tanks deployed to clear space hulks before they become a threat, to conduct lightning boarding actions, or to teleport in and sever the head of an enemy, with many Space Marine chapters operating as rapid response forces rather than mass combat legions. The ability to field Terminator armoured warriors is incredibly useful but they're also the rarest resource the chapter has available, and each suit lost is a crushing blow to a force already stretched a bit too thin. Thanks for watching. And if you'd like to find out more about the, I don't know, stuff of the 41st millennium, well, there's probably a video coming up there on the right. And if you'd like to support the channel so I can keep on making even more of these, then there's a link to the Patreon in the thingy below. See ya.